Triads are the essential building blocks of all chords and really the key to understanding harmony. They also happen to be an excellent tool for mapping out the fretboard and having a visual understanding of where things fall on the neck. Today we're going to go over some triad basics and one of the many ways we can use triads to enhance our playing. My name is Jack Roosh. Welcome to my channel. Let's get into it. All right, so to start out, a triad is a three note chord consisting of the root, the third, and the fifth. Now for a major triad, we can find these notes within the major scale, right? So we're gonna play the first note of the scale, the third note of the scale, and the fifth note of the scale to find these intervals. So I'll play an A major scale here. And all we're gonna do is play that first note A, the third note C sharp, and the fifth note E, and those are the notes of an A major triad, right? Now we can do this with any scale. For instance, a minor scale, we would get A, C, and E, which would be a minor triad with the root, minor third, and fifth. But these basic triad shapes um, can be found all over the fretboard, right? On different string sets and different inversions, right? An inversion is just flipping the order of these notes. So we can play this uh, A, C sharp, E all over the place. We can move it up here. And there we have C sharp, E, A, right? The third, uh, fifth, and root. And then we have Right, that's the fifth root third. And then we can move it up string sets. Right, we get all these different voicings and inversions. Right, so there's tons of ways we can play this all over the fretboard. But the real key to this comes when we start applying it to a chord progression and seeing how these different triad shapes connect together within the context of a tune. So for this, uh, I'm gonna use a very simple chord progression. This is just gonna go A major to E major to F sharp minor to D major. This is gonna be our uh, chord progression we're going to use to demonstrate how I use some of these triad groupings. Now this is a really simple, very common type of chord progression. Um, but what we're going to do is figure out how we can access these triad shapes in different positions. And this is a really valuable tool for coming up with rhythm guitar parts, especially playing in the context of a band where you might have another guitarist playing um, some lower open chord voicings and you want to just find a guitar part that uh, takes up a different space and works really well in the context of the music. So um, all we're going to do is map out these triads on this one string grouping. So we're going to be working on the D string, the G string, and the B string today. And because a triad is a three note chord, we've got three different positions we can map out these chords. All right, so to start out, we're gonna use this A major triad shape right here on the D, G, and B strings, right? We have E, the fifth on the bottom, A, the root in the middle, and C sharp, the major third on top. Now, the trick from here is to find the nearest triad shape for the next chord in the progression, which in this case is E major. So to find an E major triad, again, we just play the root third and fifth of the major scale, the first, third, and fifth notes, right? So E major, the first note is E, the third note is G sharp, and the fifth note is B. So the closest place we can play those three notes on this string set in this position is right here. There's E, G sharp, and an open B string. And moving on to the next chord in the progression, F sharp minor, we can move up here and we have the root, minor, third, and fifth of F sharp minor, right? And then to find D, we just move one note, right? And then we have the third, fifth, and root of a D major chord. So all these triads are right next to each other and very closely connected, right? And seeing these connections is really key to 
coming up with cool rhythm parts uh, to move through these chords. This works really well in the context of a band and especially on electric guitar. Oftentimes you don't have to play uh, big full six string chords. Um, these smaller shapes really work a lot better. And we can tie these triads together since all these chords are diatonic to A major. We can use notes from the A major scale to create little melodic movements between these chords and to come up with fills. So for that, all we have to really know is our A major scale pattern in that position. Right, and then we can start to connect these things. And come up with these really nice little connected um, rhythm parts um, that, you know, utilize some single note lines. And this can be great for coming up with fills. Right, so now I'll play through um, this chord progression, and I'm going to start out by just playing these basic triads in this position. And then I'll play a couple times through connecting them together with some scale notes and creating some fills to give you an idea of how you can use this to come up with rhythm guitar parts. <laughs> So let's move up to our next position. We started out with an A major right here. Um, our next voicing for that same triad on this string set is right here. Here we have the root position uh, voicing with the root, major third, and fifth on top. Now to find our E major from here, all we do is just move right down there. And we have the third, fifth, and root of our E major chord. And our F sharp minor, is right here. We have the minor third, fifth, and root right there. And then our D major is right here uh, with the fifth, root, and major third, right? So all these chords are so closely connected together right here, right? We don't have to worry about playing big chunky bar chords or open position chords. We've got everything right there at our disposal to use for coming up with rhythm guitar parts. And again, we can create fills by adding notes from the A major scale. And our A major scale position is right here. Right, and so just by using that, we can connect these chords together, right? create these really nice little fills that really work well um, for adding some new flavors to our rhythm guitar parts. So here I'm going to do this again where I'm going to play um, through the chord progression just playing the triads first and then I'll play a couple times around adding some fills and connecting these triad shapes together with notes from the A major scale. <laughs> So we've got one more batch of triads here, uh, moving from this A major triad. Our final shape is up here, where we have the third, fifth, and root on top, right? So all we're doing is just moving through these different triad inversions 
for each one of these chords. So A major is here, uh, followed by E major, which is right here, then F sharp minor right there, and finally D major right there. So again, all these chords are right here, right next to each other. So we don't have to move around or jump around or play big uh, cumbersome bar chords. We can literally make this progression anywhere we want, right? And again, we can connect these triad shapes together by using this A major scale, right? Which is right in that position. So just taking this we can come up with some really beautiful little lines to connect these triad shapes together. So I'll do this one more time where I'm going to play the triad shapes first and then connect them together uh, with some little fills from the scale. So now that we've got each one of these positions mapped out, we can start to connect them together. It's a really good idea to practice these types of things in one position at a time and get really comfortable um, with each position. That way, as you're moving around, um, you're really fluent in every spot on the neck and you have a good handle on it and a good vocabulary of things to play. But once you get comfortable, then it's time to start stringing them together. And that's where you really open up the fretboard and can start playing with some freedom, right? So once we start tying these together, right, we can start moving this around. Right, and then we're not tied down to any one position. We can play with total freedom and really uh, get the most out of the guitar neck. And most importantly, just have a good visual um, handle on where things are on the fretboard. So as we're playing and we're coming up with things or improvising, we can easily look down at the fretboard and visually see these triad shapes that give us sort of a blueprint for where we need to go. So now I'm gonna play uh, again through the track a few times, and I'm just gonna play freely using all of these triad shapes that we worked through on this one string set and tie them together with some fills um, out of those major scales. And you can get a sense of how I would use this kind of thing in a, a real world context. so hopefully this lesson was useful to you as always thank you guys for watching come join me on patreon if you want the tabs uh, for this lesson and all my other lessons as always thank you for watching take care and until next time happy practicing